So this is number five from the 2024 AP Stats exam. And this is the question that kind of bounces around with ideas from several different units of the course. So the setup is pretty detailed here. So we've got baseball cards that are either regular or rare. And someone's at a collector's convention with approximately 20,000 attendees. And what Michelle believes is that there's a relationship between the number of months someone has been collecting the cards and whether the majority of the cards in their collection are regular or rare. So she has taken a random sample of 500 baseball card collectors at the convention, figured out how many months they've been collecting and whether or not the majority of the cards in their collection are regular, as we have across this row of the table, or rare, as we have across this row of the table. So our data is presented in a two-way table here, and in part A, we're asked to do a probability calculation. So one collector is gonna be chosen from the sample at random. What's the probability that that collector has been collecting cards for 11 months or more, and has the majority of regular cards in their collection. Show your work. So this is an intersection of two different events. Someone being col a collector for 11 months or greater and also having the majority of the cards in their collection being regular cards. So I would simply look for the 11 months or more columns which start in this column and work their way to the right and I would look across that row where the regular category is denoted and I would recognize the total number of people that are both of those majority of their cards regular and being collectors for 11 months or more are those three values if I sum those three values divided by the total number of people in the sample, I end up with my probability of 0.518. Definitely says to show your work, so you'd, you'd want to show the addition of those three values going into your numerator there. There's no need to subtract anything. We don't have events that are going to have the potential to overlap here. So this is kind of a standard just summing individual values to get uh, an overall probability calculation. Another probability calculation in Part B so says given that a randomly selected collector from the sample has been collecting baseball cards for fewer than six months, what is the probability that the collector has a majority of regular cards in their collection? Show your work. So we only need to be concerned with this column, right? It says given that the person we're considering has been collecting for fewer than six months. So we don't need to worry about any of those other columns. We know we have 91 total people that have been collectors for fewer than six months. And how many of them were having the majority of the cards in their collection being regular? 80 out of the 91. So there's, def there's a formula that you could use for this conditional probability calculation, but usually when your data is presented in a two-way table as it is here, it's pretty straightforward just to reason it out by isolating the row or column that you're concerned with for the given event and doing your calculation as we've done here, which ends up being a little bit beneath 0.9, so 0.879. Next part says that Michelle believes there's a relationship between the number of months someone's been collecting and which type of card is the majority in their collection. We need to figure out which hypothesis test Michelle should use to investigate this belief. When your data is presented in a two-way table as it is here, what's typically going to be the hypothesis test that you're going to use is some form of a chi-square test. Now, if you think about the phrasing of what Michelle believes, there is a relationship or there is an association, it makes sense for Michelle to use the chi-square test for association. Now, the second part of Part C asks us to state the appropriate null and alternative hypotheses for the test that we just identified. It doesn't ask us to carry out the test, just identify the null and alternative hypotheses. So when you're running a chi-square test for association, your null hypothesis is always that there is no association between the variables. We want to do this in context, so we would want to say between the length of time someone has been collecting cards and whether the majority of cards in their collection are regular or rare. Uh, and then the alternative would be the opposite of that. So we would actually have an association between those two variables as the alternative. Now in the final part of this, 
they say that Michelle ran the hypothesis test, got a p-value of 0 0.0075. All conditions were met, so she was valid to go to run the test. What conclusion can we make about the belief? Justify the response. Well, 0 0.0075, that's smaller than any of the significance levels that we would commonly use. Uh, so we would have a p-value that is smaller than alpha, and that would give us evidence in favor of the alternative. So Michelle has evidence suggesting that there is an association between the length of time someone has been collecting baseball cards and whether the majority of the cards in their collection are regular.